Uh, hi, my name is Philip White. I'm interviewing my grandmother, Pilar Poblashin Malilai. Um, do you have any stories about the Japanese resistance? Oh, yeah. I have a long story if I'll tell you. What do you want to know? Um, it... Is any interesting one? Oh, do you want my history of my brother or okay. do you want do you want my own experience? Um, my own experience? Yeah. During the Japanese time, I was 12 to 13 years old. I was a teenager, a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the Japanese were so cruel. They were very cruel. So for three years, I have been sleeping in the boonies. And uh, one day, the Japanese penetrated in our place because they were looking for an American family. That American family has seven kids. He was a captain in the uh, uh, U.S. Army, married to a Filipina who is related to us, and she has seven kids. And with the seven kids, they were my playmates. Mm -hmm. And uh, food was uh, scarce, and this American likes milk. So what they did is they raised goats. So they raised goats. I also raised goats. I have 17 goats where I have to milk. They also milk their own goats. Mm -hmm. And finally one day, the Secret Service said the, American, the, the Japanese is going to penetrate in, that, in our place because they, they heard from a spy that there is a family, American family living in that place. Mm -hmm. And so one evening, the spy came in and said, they are, they are coming. And so this, uh, this American family was in, in our place, you know, hiding. And so they, this American uh, man don't want to leave. But his revolver is always in his lap. Really, I don't know if he will commit suicide or he's going to fight back. But she has even kids behind him. And so my mother went to that house where they are staying, hiding, and begged them to leave the place because the Japanese knows where they are. And we have a place that is a uh, fax hole. That, that fax hole is under the bamboo ticket, you know, where it was intended for the resisting governor of the island of Iduido. My mother is the first cousin of the governor of Iduido mm -hmm. that was resisting the Japanese, and the Japanese were also looking for the governor. And so one evening, this family don't want to live. And my mother went there and begged them, please leave, because they're already there in the river. Leave, and you go to that fax hole where we intended to keep the, the governor. Yeah. So finally they left, and they did not even eat, and they went to that hole, you know, and they didn't mm -hmm. take it. And so the Japanese came, looking for them. And you know what happened? <laughs> Nung picto, with Cecilia, Cecilia was only two years old, but she was English-speaking. So they were early morning, early morning, still dark. This Japanese came in and said, Hapon, Hapon, Hapon. So my sister peeped in the window and said, How oh, come? This young thing, Hapon, when he is a Japanese and he has a gun. And so finally my sister said, Japanese. So no to ran with Cecilia in her back and then hid in the, in the cave in the bank of the river. And my sister ran first and then when she reached the river, there was a vine, you know, a big vine that was uh, hanging. So he took the vine and swing herself back, back, and he was able to cross the river. No picto was left in the, left in the game. And the Japanese came and he was captured. But my sister was able to run. He did not capture. So Cecilia was in his back. And my brother-in-law said, when the Japanese gets you, do not, do not, do not go. Always stay in my back. So, so, they were caught, and the, all the people in the village was was uh, put in a place, you know, and they were all interviewed. And there was a teenager. He was a high school uh, student, and he's very smart. He was not able to go down of their house, and the Japanese took them and beheaded him in front of the people. Beheaded. You know what's uh, the, the big samurai like that? Yeah. They just make you roll like that, and ping! hit you in the back, so your head dances down there, and your body just falls. Mm. And so they were still looking for them. Uh, what other atrocities did you witness? 
but under atrocities, and then with that concentration when those Japanese keep on going to a hut, you know, it so happened that they passed in this house. The house is owned by a teacher who is very religious. And that night, the husband, because he had an, uh, he has a miscarriage, the husband put her in the, in the foxhole also, in the grasses, you know, to hide her and the husband ha uh, uh, ran because she cannot run because she's bleeding. And it so happened when the Japanese came to their house, this dog, you know, ran to the, ran to the teacher that's hiding in the hole, so the Japanese followed the dog. Oh. I found the teacher in the hole. And you know what they did with the teacher? What? They cut off her susu, raped her, and killed her. And she's the teacher. And uh, this other man, this other man, the father of uh, the father of uh, General, uh, the, the grandfather of General Kroshiro now, went out and uh, he wants to meet the Japanese and they want to tell, you know, the Japanese that these people are here in America. So he was dead again. And so, and that's it. Uh, can you tell me about your brother that was in the resistance in the Japanese? Oh, my brother. I have two brothers who were inducted in the army. My old, uh, the oldest brother is a second year law student, and my brother, other brother, is high school. Now they were sent to Sambuaga to defend Sambuaga from the Japanese, and the Japanese were so many. You know, they're dead. They make the dead their ladder so they can just reach the land. And it so happened my, my younger brother was told to go to that village to get the ammunition. He did not reach the village to get bullets, you know, and the Japanese were able to go through the line in the inside. And my oldest brother was, uh, I don't know where he went, that he was not there. And uh, finally when they were, the Japanese were winning, there was a, a radio that the hunters were in the people's lots died already. And so my oldest brother thought that my youngest brother surrendered to the Japanese. So he went from concentration camp to concentration camp in Mindanao Island, but he did not find my brother. So we thought he was dead. But my brother was able to speak to him for another few years. So when my oldest brother went to Lanao, he did not find my, my youngest brother there. So finally, he was about to go to Davao and uh, Kutabato because we have relatives there and we know people there, Messiahs who came from Hilo and who sit there. They saw that the Japanese were bombarding Davao and Sambonga. So he went back and went to Cagayan because we have a relative in Cagayan. Mm -hmm. So while they were crossing the mountain in Mindanao, he got sick of malaria. And so when he got sick of malaria, uh, he said uh, he went to that village where a relative is, and uh, at that time there was no medicine. The only medicine is sulfanilamide, sulfanilamide. What can sulfanilamide do? That's that's just to prevent infection. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no antibiotics during the war. Not even sulfanilamide is very scarce. So he took that and he felt a little bit better, but finally one day the Japanese plane came in strafing, you know, all those remnant soldiers that were. And uh, when he ran down the house, he fell. And that's the time when he got very sick and he died there. And we cannot find his grave anymore. Because all those people who buried him died after the war. Oh. And the tree that they planted in that place where he was buried is gone. So we cannot find him. And so my brother, my other brother, what he did is he came up with a one that knows how to paddle the boat, the canoe. The other one is a good cook, but who knows how to cook, mm -hmm. fish or whatever. So they went from island to island until they reached Panay Island. They had to steal these small boats, you know, mm -hmm. and go to the other island. Then when they reached the next island, they steal again the boat and then steal again. And finally they reached Negros Island. Negros Island is just very close to Panay. It's just like this. And when they reached Negros, the Japanese were penetrating. This would be Japanese again, they're penetrating. So what they did is, there was a priest who told them to change their uniforms to civilians. So the Japanese would know them. So they changed the uniform to civilian. They threw their, their uniforms and they were in civilian clothes. And they walked until they reached a village in Negros where it is near 
near Panay Island. Mm -hmm. And then in the place, they know somebody with a big boat, Batil. They call it Batil in Sana. It's a big boat with the wind, what you call that, wind uh, thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so they were able to reach the And mm -hmm. my brother was saying, 